So this is Baruch Fleischman, and we find ourselves back at Jewish Astrology of Cosmic Science, Torah, Talmud, and Zohar works, by a really tremendous, tremendous writer. You have to realize that Jakob Cronenberg is the bedrock of Jewish astrology. He's not the only Jewish astrologer, because Jewish astrologers go back, and in his book, this book itself, he shows you the origins of, uh, of those who really understood the backgrounds of the movements of the world and their impact on human beings in detail as we have seen so this man says you know i'm not a rabbi so don't you know don't call me a rabbi he's a chacham in kabbalah he's a chacham in astrology it's just a tremendous book here for us to be able to share so i want to read it i want to see what we're talking about uh, he has some ideas here. I'm going to try to go through it. Up here we have the, the uh, a symbol of the tribes in the desert. Now we've been working with the concept of there are 12 permutations of the name yud k vav -K, And all of them go along with different aspects. Now all of this is a very interesting chart. This is you learn a lot from this right here. And so we will get a chance to look at it, God willing, more. But first we're going to go on a little little side trip here with real background uh, and I just think that the way that it's written is just so terrifically good tremendously good let us look at these 12 names and coming from in the Kabbalistic model of creation so he says he wants to look at these names which I just showed you in a cosmic kind of way a while back I did a course called the basic model of the universe in this course, I gave you a basic outline of the Kabbalistic view of how the universe is run. And it's important to know that this is available, I think, still on YouTube. You could, re you could re put in his Jakob Cronenberg, and you could use the basic model of the universe, and he'll speak to you. So, and we learned that there are a number of different worlds, one on top of the other, with the lowest world being the world called the Sia, the world of action. This is the world which is where we find the Earth. This is where we are. It includes the Earth, the planets, the stars, and the constellations. The rabbis call this world the world of Ophanim, of wheels, but it also means cycles. So we see a circular Earth, a circular Moon, the Sun. We see all the planets moving in circles. Everything is constantly our own planet is moving a thousand miles an hour in a circle. Above our world of Asiya is the world of Yitzira formation. That is the world of angels, which is a way of saying like intermediate, intermediate, intermediate channels and chariots. And above that, we see the world of Berea creation. And above that, we have the world of Itzilus emanation. And above that, we have the fifth world of Adam Kadmon, that is primordial man, the first human being which is the interface. What is the first human being? The first human being is something incredibly, incredibly small, which is the interface between the four lower worlds, we become progressive, progressively more physical, and the endless ain't self of infinity, which is nothing. Now, going on. The Baal Shem Tov used to say that it is not, it is not that there is no mazel to Israel. There is no planetary influence on the Jewish people. But rather that the mazel of Israel comes from the letter Ayin. Now I was going to show everybody the letter Ayin. I didn't get it, so I didn't do it. Wait one second. I'll stop this and I'll find my Anah. Okay, so real quickly, this is the best I could do. This is the letter Ayin. That's what it looks like. The way it's constructed. All the different parts of it. The little tops on the soap, so on and so forth, they all represent the word ayin. Ayin means nothing. Baal Shemta used to say that, it's not, that there's no mazel to Israel. It's not that there's no mazel. There is no planetary influence on the people of Israel. But rather that the mazel of Israel comes from the letter ayin, which means nothingness, which is the highest sif sphera of Kesser. The highest possible place that we can come to is the place of total bittal nullification of our own egos, total total nullification. Because the Ains of Barahu is nothing. The background of this world of what makes the world run is not something. 
So we put words on it. energy, spheros. We have different kinds of words. So the world of Adam Kadman, Kether is the crown. This place called Kether, Kasser in, in Ashkenaz, is the crown, the highest world which is, transcends, all, transcends all of existence and all four worlds below it. So the Kether of Asilus is the highest part of the Asilus and above. So you have to get to the crown of eminence, which is really that barrier, that slight physicality, which separates us from nothing. And that is where the influence of the Mazel, the people of Israel, come from. Rabbi Moshe Kordavera is known as the Ramak in his commentary on the Sefer Yetzir. He gives us new ideas. What does he say? He says some heavy things. We'll see how much we can get through. In our understanding, excuse me, let me get it down here. In our understanding of these 12 names and their permutations, he deals with these 12 permutations in his explanation of the 13 divisions of the beard of Adam Kadma. He says that this, we're just introducing this idea. Let's read it again. There are the 12 names. So the 12 names are the 12 names of the tribes, but they also correspond to different kinds of permutations of the name Yud K. Vavke. This is what we've been working on throughout this entire session. The 12 names and their permutations. He deals with these 12 permutations in his explanation of the 13 divisions of what? Of the beard of Adam Kadmon. He called Adam Kadmon the first human being. He actually, Adam Kadmon is some sort of a veil in the form that we see manifest in us uh, over the ain'ts, over, over, the, over the light of nothing, which creates a chefresh, a difference, a division between nothing and something, which is now called Adam Kadma, in our form. Then there's also actually 12. It's actually 12 plus the 13th as the interface. There's a 12th, and we see this. This is the concept of beard, which is talked about in great, great detail, because what are we talking about? We're talking about plugging in to the source of all life, which is eternal. So it is possible to do that. And that's where we're at. Which are very high up on the top of the world of its seals emanation and are connected to the Kether, the crown of the world of its seals. To the iron which the Baal Shem Tov talked about, the iron which is nothing. The source of the 13 divisions of the universe is being directed from it. Let me see, I think a skip. 13 divisions of the beard is called the Moach Stimo Varich. The Arich, I think, and the Arich. It's called the closed up mind of Arich Anpen, which is called Arich. The concealed mind. This is where the whole universe is being directed from. It is from this one place, which is called the hidden mind, that is the Mu'ach Stimah. There is a very famous story of, the, of, of Moshe Rabbeinu, who was on Mount Sinai receiving the Torah. He had a vision. He had a vision there. While he was receiving the Torah, where he saw all the people in the future who would study the Torah and his teachings. And God showed him Rabbi Akiba, who would be a great sage in the future. And in his vision, Moshe Rabbeinu saw Rabbi Akiva expounding on the Torah, and Moshe Rabbeinu saw that he didn't understand what Rabbi Akiva was explaining. Even Moshe Rabbeinu found it hard to understand Rabbi Akiva. So to cut a long story short, Moshe asked, uh, what will his reward be? And God showed him another vision, showed him how Rabbi Akiva was being tortured, tortured to death by the Romans by having his skin peeled off with metal combs, one layer at a time. And he died in excruciating pain. So then Moshe Rabbeinu asked God, this is the man, and this, and in this, this is going to be his reward? And God said to him, be quiet. This is what went up in my will. And understand that our connection, our greatest connection, to be able to understand the Ein Baruch Hu, or to have a path to get there, is to understand, I think the Kabbalists are saying, this concept called will. It's my will 
that is what went up in my mind. In other words, we can't understand, and even Moshe couldn't understand the higher mind of God, which is high up above, beyond, or more. The way I say it, when you say it, it's like it's panimi, means it came first. It's going all the way back to the inspiration for everything we see around us comes from this one place. It's running the world, so to speak. This one place. There is God's will. That is God's will there. And when he created the world, he created it in a certain way specific, with a specific purpose. He had created, he, he, had, he let's see, uh, purpose. He had everything below attached to the mazel, which are the planetary influences. So Moshe is this, is this the man and is this his reward, he said. If a person does good, he should get a good reward. And if he does bad, he should get punished. But it isn't always set up that way. It's set up some other way. God didn't always set it up that way because there is always what is called the planetary influence, which is the influence of the planets and the stars. There is that part of nature where everybody has a particular destiny and a particular challenge in this world. Now, let me move this up here a little bit. Looking for the word that where once I move it I can't find it again. So Rabbi Kiva said and said and he said to God, "Is this the man? And this is is this is reward? If a person does good, he should get a good reward, and if he does bad, he should be punished. But it isn't always set up that way. God didn't always set it up that way because there's always what is called the planetary influence. There's some kind of a natural process that's going around around us all the time, which is the influences." that are coming through the physicality of the planets and the stars in our direction. There is that part of nature where everybody has a particular destiny and a particular challenge in this world. So things are different to what we would expect an ideal world to be. Every person has particular things that they come into this world to fix. And sufferings that they have to deal with. And all this comes from what we call the hidden mind. Now, this is a new idea. Now, this is what, if you're listening to the Rabbi Nosen's speech, it's the same idea. He calls it, Rabbi Nachman refers to this as the Seichel, Shiyesh uh, Bechaldavr. They call it the I, that is a letter I, or Yo in Spanish, or Ani in Hebrew. There was a master I. And this master I is, we're attached to it. Just like it's like within us, it's also beyond us. It's in the kolal of everything around us. So he says in the mind, this is the true source of all the planetary systems and their influences. The planetary system is the system through which God directs his will, which is an unknown to people. People don't understand this. Look and think, think about it for the second. You're, where are you right now? Or are you moving? Or are you sitting still? Well, the truth is you're not sitting still. The ball in which we are living, which is giant in relationship to us, is moving. It's turning. It's turning constantly. Not only is it turning by itself, but it's turning around a big light, a huge source of energy going around and around with other other really circular bodies, just like the world itself, which is 100% circular, we're working, working as we've seen before, a thousand miles an hour, but you don't realize it. This is all the planetary system, and the planetary system is through which God directs his will, which is unknown to people. We don't understand God's will. We don't really understand our purpose, except we have our Torah. So the righteous do not always receive good, and the wicked do not always receive bad. The wicked are being rewarded in this world, and sometimes we see the righteous suffer. So this is the source of the twelve permutations of the name Havaya, which is Yud K Vavke. This is the higher mind, and the source of the thirteen divisions of the beard, which we will discuss. Remember that there are twelve divisions with the 13 one being the central one. 
the one that is actually the interface that, so to speak, carries the ball. With all 12 wrapped up into it, the 12 permutations of God's name. What he's explaining is something that's that's said over in the Idra Rabbis, it's, it, it's the Idras. The nature of the beard is the number 13, with the 13th being the interface that actually brings the Shef of light of God to us, our connection point. So it wrapped it up into the, uh, into the emanating the 12 permutations of God's name. They all work like that. That's 12 of them. This is a source of all of the planetary influences, that, which we might call nature, on the people of Israel. Like the Baal Shem Satov said, Ein Maza well, the Jews are not controlled by the planets. It is directed that we are able to vision and connect ourselves to the source. It is directed from up there, from beyond this, from the Ayin, from that place which is nothing. And then it goes down from the Ayin through the beard to the 12 protect permutations of God's name. And now we have another vision of Jewish astrology written here by, not Rabbi, the Chacham. Really this person, just tremendous what he, what he actually did with his life here. Says Rabbi Yaakov Cronenberg. 